Welcome back. Now, are political journalists being conned by number 10 and spreading lies? Over the past weeks and months of Brexit wrangling, many people claim to have noticed a change in how Downing Street is using the media to get its message out. The veteran journalist Peter Oborn has accused some of the UK's biggest news outlets of effectively becoming clients of Boris Johnson's government and of spreading fake news. Peter Oborn is with me now. So we've all seen those tweets talking about senior Downing Street sources saying things, stories that turned out to be true, like prorogation, were denied. But wasn't it always like this? I mean, haven't journalists always relied on anonymous sources? Of course you're right that journalists have, have always relied on anonymous uh, sources. Uh, but what is new, and it's, it's happened the moment that Boris Johnson entered Downing Street at the end of July and brought with him Dominic Cummings, his senior adviser, and a group of, of other figures from within the old Vote Leave campaign, that a, a, a total unscrupulousness uh, has developed. And I would criticise um, a very large number of very senior British journalists, Laura Kunzberg, Peston, uh, the Daily name, Mail. Oh, no, it's important here, so... to name names. Oh, anyway, my own paper, the Daily Mail, the Mail on Sunday. And what they're doing is taking, passing on rub rubbish, very often, information, much of it false, straight on, some, sometimes via Twitter, sometimes via their, uh, their own reports, which, many of, much of which turns out to be false. Well, you see, I mean, Robert Peston has replied to you, and he, he said I, I, it's his him. job to, to, to draw back the veil yeah. and to report things that are said to him. Now, and and th that makes us all the wiser. Yeah. The, the problem, though, here is that instead of doing the job of a journalist, which is to interrogate in a in sceptical way the information you're getting from a number 10 Downing Street, what they are actually doing is just shoveling it on unmediated and allowing themselves to become effectively press spokesman for Boris Johnson and the senior advisor, Dominic Cummings. But do you think that, that this is being done to deliberately mislead? Of course. You know, that they're trying to del deliberately lie and that that's a new departure? Or is this just the normal, you know, government has a plan, it briefs it out, plans change, things don't as go according as to I, plan? As I said at the start, it is a completely new state of affairs which can be dated directly to the moment Boris Johnson became Prime Minister. It enables the Prime Minister to have two, two public policies. He will, for instance, he will say, I'm going to obey the courts in a promise to, to the courts, and at the same time, some, a, a, a compliant political editor of national uh, not uh, national fame will go on will tweet or say that she that he or she is understanding from their sources that the prime minister is doing something else uh, and so and what they the problem my very strong criticism of a large number of political editors is they are not interrogating this they government sources and they're also using them to uh, to pass on smears lies fake news uh, and they're debauching b british political discourse um, is, it, but is it actually down to individuals or is it down to, you know, the editors, the bosses, the, the newspaper bosses that are sort of... I mean, some of the newspapers want to support Boris Johnson, so they're putting this stuff out there. Yes, it's a, um, the media organisations. Does it, does it come down to individual lobby journalists? Or... Well, I would say, of course, every, liberal, every lobby journalist is responsible for his or her output. And I think, I, I'm quite certain, I'm afraid, it's quite shameful in my view, that they are allowing themselves to be gamed, to be managed, to be manipulated by these dining street, these dining street sources. But if, if what you're saying is correct, then it, I mean, obviously it's quite a sinister development Very in sinister. terms of the management of, of and the media. More than how, that, it's a betrayal of journalism. So how, how can the media, how should the media respond? How should things change? How could you run things differently if that's the way they behave? I think it would be... It's about time that when a government source was quoted, he, was he or she was identified. So instead of saying a government source says... Uh, smear, uh, quotes a government source smearing Dominic Grieve or Amber Rudd or somebody, you say this smear has been carried out by Lee Kane, for instance... But won't the that just reduce the amount of information being given well, to... Well, no, but it's it. proper... That's proper journalism. Of course it would reduce this, but it's quite shocking that... Uh, government sources inside Downing Street are allowed, without being interrogated in a proper journalistic fashion, they're just shoving this on, uh, uh, playing the role, really, of sewer for government smears and false news. I mean, I, I, in my article for Open Democracy, I give a large a number of examples of fake news put out from Downing Street. I get, and also, I would like to point out... It's important to point out one thing. 
there is a distinction between the official press office and the cabinet office, which are straightforward and, and have integrity, and these this gang of feral deceit smear, smear merchants based around Dominic Cummings, who just chuck out fake news and is taken on board and used shamelessly by news organisations. Well, I mean, look, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's an interesting argument. I'm, I must say, because they're not here, all of the people you've Apparently named, I'm sure, ran, I'm would told, argue that they are fully You ran around Fleet Street this afternoon and you couldn't find a single one of them to cover up against me. Yeah, they weren't, they weren't keen. And Boris Johnson also <laughs> has refused to appear before the MPs Liaison Committee tomorrow, <laughs> yes. which also tells you something about the difficulty of holding them to account. But mm. Peter Oborn, thank you.